Thank you so much for that message. Incredible. Uh, we do have time for some questions. I think there are some mics floating around. Anybody has a question? Yes. Over here. What sports did you play as a kid? Oh, great question. Thank you. Who, who asked that? Where is that? That was a wonderful, thank you, wonderful question. You're the same guy that knew where you were on September the 11th, 2001. I want to talk to you after this, but I feel strongly that, that kids should not specialize. There, we're even, if you, even if your goal is to be one of the elite athletes and you really do want to play in the NBA or the NFL, we're finding that the elite athletes that are the best are the ones that played a whole bunch of sports not the ones who focused and emphasized just one. I played football, basketball, baseball, golf, everything I could find except track because I didn't want to run around that track because I was lazy. Yeah, I wish I had run track as well. But I loved football. My first love was baseball. I had two goals in life. I was going to pitch for the New York Yankees and marry Carolyn Newton. I told my dad in the sixth grade, I'm going to marry Carolyn Newton. Everybody already knew she was the most beautiful girl in the world. She still is. Uh, my dad said, that's the greatest idea you've ever had. Is she aware? And I said, no, not yet. Well, she wouldn't go out with me, but uh, six years later, I finally got a date. I begged her for six years while she ignored me. But, um, and I didn't get to pitch for the Yankees, but uh, Carolyn and I celebrated our 52nd wedding anniversary last December. Uh, so. I was relentless, and the goal that really mattered came true, but I wasn't good enough to pitch for the Yankees, so I ended up having to play this other sport uh, where, where I couldn't stand and throw a ball overhanded. Uh, I had to hike a ball back to a quarterback in a ridiculous transaction that I still don't understand why we would do a thing like that. Oh, you should know, too, I uh, played offensive center for 20 years, and at all times, our footballs were properly inflated. <laughs> but my favorite sport was baseball. Um, I played football because I was better at it, and um, I was really, really blessed to have great teammates. But that was, that's a good question. I think you should play every sport as often as you can. Ben? Who were your role models growing up? My role models growing up um, were plentiful. Um, I was just old enough to understand a little bit about the World Series when we got a television set at our house. I was 10 years old, and the New York Yankees were winning all the time. And Jackie Robinson was just coming on the scene, so I loved Yogi Berra. And Jackie Robinson, while he didn't play for the Yankees, I knew he was some kind of hero. I didn't understand about civil rights because I was just a baby. But uh, the kind of courage that we saw from athletes during those times, and there were also trailblazers in the sport of football, but um, my role models were people like that. I was a uh, kind of an ADHD kid and had problems in the classroom with my teachers until Miss Bolton in the fourth grade sat me in the back of the room. And here's another answer to Ben's question, who were my role models? She sat me back there because she knew I loved to read and there were little orange biographies of Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and George Washington Carver and Jackie Robinson. And so I became friends with those great, great people um, and those people who founded our nation and who fought for civil rights and other things became my heroes real early. And then my teammates became my heroes once I got to play it. Yes. We've got microphones on both sides, so John is over there and I'm over here. Okay, so well, I, I can hear this young man. Okay, um, two questions. First of all, did you consider the University of Georgia? Did I consider the University of Georgia? <laughs> For what? <laughs> I'm, I'm messing with you. My father was born on the UGA campus and graduated from the University of Georgia. And so I always assumed I would go to UGA. My, my grandmother lived... My grandmother and grandfather lived on the corner of Baxter and Cloverhurst, which is about three blocks from Sanford Stadium. Uh, I just thought I would go to Georgia until I got a map out and studied it and realized that 
Athens was not the closest campus to Agnes Scott College. <laughs> and guess who was going to be at Agnes Scott College? Carolyn Newton. So it was almost that simple. There were, there were other things involved. There, there was some controversy on the coaching staff at Georgia at, the, at that time. And Bobby Dodd was legendary. And my mom knew that I needed an academic <clears throat> kick in the bottom. To, to go to class, and so it ended up being Georgia Tech for all those reasons. My real question is, did you have anyone in specific that like you were really rivals with, like any nose guards that you like had a feud with? Did I have any uh, rivals, uh, nose guards, that I had a feud with? No, I was, I was afraid of them. Uh, I, I, no, I'm just teasing. In the NFL, if you're afraid, you won't last a day. You got to be dumb enough to think you can whip these guys. And the guy that um, gave me the most trouble was not a nose guard. He was a middle linebacker, and his name was Dick Butkus. He was a nightmare. Um, Coach Lombardi used to come to my locker after the game. We would win the game. And he'd lean over and he'd say, Butkus owns you, didn't he? So I didn't like that. So I had a tough time with Butkus, but I had a hard time. Uh, Joe Green gave me some problems. Alan Page gave me some problems. Merlin Olson gave me some problems. Those are all—all all those guys are in the NFL Hall of Fame, and they were—they were just so great um, that it was almost impossible for a regular mortal to block them. So I had to learn to make calls, and we would double team them. Now that was fun. Yes. Do you know? I do know head coach Trent Miles, and he's a wonderful football coach. He's got one of the toughest jobs in America. He did a great job uh, at his previous school, Indiana State, when he brought them from a very poor program uh, to a, an excellent program, and he's going to do that at Georgia State. It's going to take a little longer, and we could have done a much better job of giving him a better foundation. I wish we had. But uh, they won last night, and I'm so glad, and they need to keep on. What, what we really need, we all need to get behind us Georgia State, because I'm, I'm a Georgia Tech guy, and I'm also a Georgia State guy. And the reason we love Georgia State, one reason, is my wife earned her master's and her Ph.D. at Georgia State. It took her 14 years. She's a slow learner. Uh, she, she was raising our children and moving around the country and wanted to do her advanced degree work, and the only school in America that would be flexible enough to allow her to do that was the Georgia State University. We are forever indebted to Georgia State. So I want to see them do well. we got to get that football field. we got to get Turner Stadium. So those of you, and I know I'm speaking to a sophisticated audience, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Those of you that have some clout around Atlanta in money circles or in political circles, that is a crucial thing for downtown Atlanta, for the state of Georgia, and for that great university, which is about to become the biggest university in the state. Okay. Do I have any siblings? Yes, I had two sisters. And um, I should have told you cheerleaders that my wife, Carolyn, um, I would come home from our high school games and my father was a dominant figure. He had been a national champion weightlifter uh, while he was at the University of Georgia. And I wanted him to approve of me, and I'd say, Dad, how did I do? He'd say, I don't know, but Carolyn Newton's the greatest cheerleader I've ever seen. <laughs> Honestly, he did that to me. Um, my sister, Linda, is also was a terrific cheerleader. Um, and I have another sister, Deborah, who is the brains of a, and she's 12 years younger than me, and we sent, we sent our uh, smartest sibling to Athens where she became a Phi Beta Kappa, and she never came home. She still lives there. She loves it, and we love her, and we love the university. So I was lucky to have those two great sisters. What was your favorite book to read? Well, when I was young, when I was your age, my favorite books to read were biography of those great people that I told you about. I, I did read about uh, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and Lincoln and all those, but I also read about athletes, Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth and Jackie Robinson. And when I read what it took for them to, um, to become great, 
I wanted to be like that, and, and I never became great, but I did become about the best I could be. And, uh, and then our uh, first child was born, um, Kristen, now Kristen Hunter, Claire's mom and Bob's wife. And Kristen always wanted to read all kinds of books. And she earned a PhD in English from Emory after graduating from the University of Virginia and now is the head of the English department at Westminster High School. So I got some folks in my family that read a lot more books than I do, but I love, I still love biography, but I also love to read uh, history. And that's because I'm married to a history major. And both our daughter and my wife hand me books and say, read this soon. And I do. Okay, right back here. Say that again. What made me want to do sports? That's another great question. What a great question. I think um, I went through a bad period when I tried to be a bully. And what happens eventually if you become a bully and you guys some of you already have learned this. Some of you still think you're cool and you're going to bully people. Don't ever do that. That's not cool. Don't be a bully. What happens is you pick on the wrong guy. <laughs> Sooner or later, then you get bullied for a long time. That broke me of bullying. So I realized that, I, and that's a wonderful question. I realized that it was terrible to either be a bully or to be bullied. And I had all this energy, and I loved to play sports. So we had a good little league program in College Park, Georgia, and I went out for the little league, and then I went out for these other sports, and uh, it all worked out really well for me. The one mistake I made, and I'll tell you this again, my magnanimitas was not developed because I was not doing my schoolwork until I got to Georgia Tech. And at Georgia Tech, you don't have any choice. You're either going to do the work or you're going to go home. And I knew if I went home, I was going to work construction the rest of my life, and I did not want to do that. So um, I played sports because I enjoyed them so much, and I was drawn to them. I guess that's the best way to say it. Well, it's just a wonderful privilege. I, I love NYO. I, Thank you on behalf of our granddaughters and Bob and our daughter, Kristen. Um, okay, here's another one. Who's your favorite football player? My favorite football player is Ben Utt. <laughs> there we go. I have a lot of great uh, close friends that I played with and against that, are, that became very close friends to me. Um, the, to have actually snapped the ball to Bart Starr and Johnny Unitas is still something I can hardly um, believe. Bart's fighting for his life over in Birmingham, having had massive strokes and, um, about a year ago. And United, John has already passed on. But um, I, you, you really shouldn't have favorites as a player or a coach. But if you're a center and you give, you give up your life in defense of trying to defend somebody and protect them, then you come to love them. And so um, if I were forced to pick, I'd say those two. And then there's a, the great Willie Davis at, at uh, Green Bay who kind of adopted me and took me under his wing and taught me what to say. And what I, I was afraid that I was going to say something racist, and I did. And uh, Willie, instead of rejecting me, he loved me. I still have a hard time even believing that, but he did. Uh, and then the great John Mackey, uh, the greatest tight end of all time, was my roommate my last year at Baltimore. And he, he became a very close friend. So I could go on and on, but that's some of the favorites. And, and uh, I'm, I'm not teasing. Ben Utt is one of those men that I love very much. What was your favorite position in football? My favorite position in football? Well, there's only one position that really matters. I mean, if the center doesn't snap the ball, nothing happens, right? They, 
But what I really wanted to do is play quarterback, and the only thing that kept me from playing quarterback, um, I only lacked one thing, it was talent. <laughs> and you've all been very wonderful, and I love you very much, and anything I can do to help over here, I would like to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Curry. Thank, Thank you. you. Coach, just one more thing. We do have a, a token of appreciation. We have an NY Coach shirt for the coach. So thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.